E3 is, without a doubt, one of the biggest toss-ups of the year. Every time you go into an E3 presentation, you're gonna come out thinking that was one of the greatest two hours of your life, or one of the absolute worst. So this year, it's not an understatement to say that expectations are high going into E3 2021. There's a lot on the line here, and a lot of fans eagerly frothing at the mouth to see what will be announced. Long-awaited sequels, brand new titles, and so much more. I'm staying optimistic, and have hopes for some damn cool titles to be shown off this year, so I'm going to be keeping an eye on every single presentation that I can, starting with... Also, feel free to subscribe if you like the video. I'd appreciate it. Summer Game Fest kicked off the E3 season and it was jam-packed with announcements. Look at all these fucking lions. It's clear this presentation was not lacking on the sheer amount of content that they had. Jeff made sure of that one. But the actual quality of what was shown, well... Oh, that doesn't look healthy at all. Starting off the presentation with Tiny Tina's Wonderland, a Borderlands spin-off game. I have almost zero attachment to the Borderlands series and especially none for Tiny Tina, but I'm happy for Borderlands fans all the same. A new Metal Slug was shown off. I've been a fan of the series since I was a little kid, but now they've gone and turned it into a Fire Emblem game, so it doesn't look like I'll be having any more medals to slug. Death Stranding announced a director's cut by showing us yet another trailer that seems to garner more questions than answers. A new Warzone season, Chicory Colorful Tale, Blood Hunt, Tales of Arise. Holy shit, is that the voice of Pikachu? But everything they showed while it was occasionally exciting, it wasn't the ground shakers that I think me and a lot of the crowd here were hoping for. Salt and Sacrifice looks really fun to play, but visually it looks like I'd find it on Newgrounds in 2010. And whoever put together this Escape from Tarkov trailer learned how to use cross dissolves and then showed us the same footage for three minutes straight. Chivalry 2, Two Point Campus, Tunic. There's a monstrous amount of Zelda clones out there, but there are very few that actually know what they're doing, and I hope this could be one of them. Monster Hunter, Far Cry, Back for Blood. Overwatch 2 reminded us that there's definitely characters in this game. Jeff Keighley Shoes, Jeff Keighley Among Us Mask. I don't even have a joke about this, I just wonder why. All this was great, but at the end of the day, most people were here for one giant looming reason. Elden Ring. After years of waiting and waiting for news, they finally showed off a full trailer and it looks gorgeous. Much like my attachment to Tiny Tina, I have almost zero attachment to Soulsborne games, but I can't even act like this game doesn't look absolutely incredible to play. Impressive looking combat aside, the scenery in the game alone is enough to make me hover over that add to cart button, and we're just gonna have to see if I end up clicking it. Like I said, a ton of stuff was shown off during this presentation, but a lot of it wasn't the stuff that people were really ultra jazzed about during E3. However, there were a couple fun surprises and things I now am genuinely looking forward to. So while it wasn't the best, it certainly wasn't the worst. I would give it a B. Wholesome Direct was one I didn't even know was going on until the day of. Much like Summer Game Fest, they had a whole mess of stuff to show off here, and they all look great. We've got a game with bugs, animals, cooking, taking pictures, animals, bugs, taking pictures, animals, Wait. The problem with Wholesome Direct is that when games like these are shown off in their own separate presentations, they stand out amongst the rest as being tiny, cutesy little games specifically designed for you to play while you're chilling. By putting 87 games just like this into one Direct, God, I don't even know where to begin chilling. It's really hard to differentiate your game amongst the cast when a majority of them all have a similar look or feel. That's not to say this is a bad thing, because they do all look legitimately good, but they also all kind of look the same. I can tell there's quality here though, and I love a good frog, so I'm gonna give it a C plus. The Summer Game Fest showed off 60 plus games over a 90 minute presentation. The Wholesome Direct showed off 50 games over a 50 minute presentation. The Ubisoft Forward showed off 9 games over a 60 minute presentation, some of which were already featured in Summer Game Fest or just straight up leaked online prior to the show. Starting off the Ubisoft Forward with a 16 minute presentation on Rainbow Six Extraction. I don't personally care about the Rainbow Six series, so obviously this trailer wasn't for me and I don't have much room to complain. But even for people who do care, 16 minutes? To see they added a flashlight? It doesn't even look bad necessarily, it's just Ubisoft doesn't know how to condense a trailer down into something easily digestible and keep moving forward at a nice pace. Next we had Rocksmith Plus, a rhythm game that allows you to connect your instrument of choice to your PC, console, or phone and learn how to play from dozens of songs. Now this is an actually neat idea. Beat Saber, Guitar Hero, Friday Night Funkin', there's so many fun rhythm games to play and it's so cool that this one has a focus on actually learning the songs to play in real life. So why does the trailer make me feel like I'm planning my own funeral. Song for you, a road in memory. 
don't give me this indie soft, hey, maybe you guys should check out our game. I wanna be excited and pumped to learn some music. I get this is a different kind of game from the ones I mentioned, but you could still make it a little more enticing. Riders Republic. As a big fan of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series, this game looks fucking awesome. It looks like you'll really be able to play the game in a ton of different ways. Jetpacks, paragliding, snowboarding, goddamn flying squirrel, motorcycles, biking. There's even stuff to do and explore for when you don't feel like risking your life in a downhill race and instead feel like exploring the landscape. Very excited for this one. Next, we got even more Rainbow Six Siege content shown off, followed by a highlight reel of more Ubisoft games. This is usually when developers throw in dozens of games they didn't quite get the chance to talk about, so Ubisoft followed suit by throwing in five. Thank goodness though, because Just Dance is coming back. Only now it will not be releasing on the Wii. All right, well, that's one less reason to go on. It showed off more Assassin's Creed, which looks actually quite beautiful. Far Cry 6, I already saw at Summer Game Fest, and onto Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. This game was leaked just a short while prior to the reveal, but either way, I am very happy to see a sequel. It's kind of disgusting, but in a cute way. It looks like they're spicing up the gameplay for the sequel, and I'm sure this will be just as good, if not better, than the original. And then they ended on a new Avatar video game, but not the Avatar most people were hoping for. Overall, this presentation had a few fun things and a few moments I enjoyed, but everything felt like it went on far too long, with Ubisoft jamming in these long interviews before or after every presentation. Sure, I like to hear what the developers have to say about their game, but do I really have to hear them explain the footage that I just saw? I'd give it a D+. In my experience, most often Xbox and Bethesda usually have solid conferences, but not quite enough to put them at the top of the list. So we'll see what kind of performance they can give us now that they've merged for this show. Hello, Todd. They started off by showing us Starfield. No idea what the hell this game is about. It's supposedly going to be a sort of Skyrim, but in space, which is a string of words I never thought I'd say. A dark grimy shooter was shown off, followed by a slightly brighter zombie shooter. I don't care much for the first one, but Back for Blood is a title I am honestly intrigued by. Left 4 Dead 2 was one of my favorites on the Xbox 360, and it doesn't look like we'll ever see a full-blown Left 4 Dead 3. This game looks like it just might be able to fill that hole. Oh my god, is that Contra? A new Sea of Thieves update. Sea of Thieves quest are truthfully not very exciting. You go to an island, talk to some guy who tells you to find another guy, and once you find that guy, he gives you a map to find a cave where some other guy is trapped, and inside you fight off skeletons and dodge obstacles to save the guy. Sounds pretty cool, right? The quests for your first few times are exciting pirate adventures, but by the fifth or so time, you've done them all. But this looks like a very refreshing addition to the Sea of Thieves storyline, and at the very least, it's got Jack Sparrow. More Yakuza was shown off, and can somebody honestly tell me what these games are about? I have no idea what is going on. Battlefield 2042 has fans very excited and for good reason. It looks awesome to play. However, my only experience with the Battlefield series was during the Battlefield 1 open beta, where 96% of the time I would spawn without a gun. Looks cool though. 12 minutes looks really interesting, along with a brand new Psychonauts 2. It feels like a very small number of people have actually played Psychonauts, but the people that played it, it is one of their favorite games of all goddamn time. Definitely want to check this one out. Moving on to everyone's least favorite portions of E3, they started talking to me. More Bethesda-y things were shown off, like Doom, Skyrim 10th Anniversary, and Fallout 76. I hadn't realized people still play this game. Party animals look super wacky and adorable, like Gang Beasts or Human Fall Flat. Hades Physical Edition, a game called Somerville that looks strikingly like Limbo or Inside, and those games always end up being pretty cool. Everybody shut the f*** up! Finally, more Halo news. I know some people out there might have problems with how Halo Infinite might look, or sound, or whatever else, but I am so excited for this game. The gameplay looks killer, with tons of classics and new features being shown off. Capture the flag, Spartan customization options, even the grappling hook alone is going to completely change the dynamic of both single player and multiplayer. I grew up with the Halo series, especially Halo 3 and Halo Reach. I never got to play much of Halo 5 or Halo 4, but I can confidently say that so far, Halo Infinite looks like the Halo I know and love. Most importantly, I am just stoked to see the Chief back in action once again. The missions change. They always do. 
Next was a few titles I wasn't especially interested in, like Diablo, A Plague Tale Requiem, even more Far Cry 6. They showed off Shredders, another sporty snowboarding type title, only this time with a severe lack of flying squirrels and bikes. Xbox showed us Replaced, and this is easily one of my top takeaways from this entire E3 week. Usually I think the pixel type graphics are a bit overdone these days, with a lot of developers opting to go for this aesthetic, but this is one of the ones that really nails it. It looks incredibly lifelike while still keeping that same design and look, similar to something like Octopath or the new Dragon Quest coming out. The trailer got me hooked from the style, the combat, the gameplay. This could shape up to be a massive title. After that, Grounded added the ability to sit. Among Us added 15 player lobbies. Who has this many friends? Outer Worlds 2 trailer, Flight Simulator, then onto Forza, which looks absolutely stunning, but I was already sold after the three minute trailer they showed. Then they launched into 10 more minutes of footage as if to really sell us on the fact that, hey, our game has cars. Great looking game, it was just unfortunate how long the trailer went on for. And the final game reveal was Redfall. The cinematic trailer was definitely really cool, and I like this band of characters so far, but I don't have much else reason to care about this game yet. They saved the best surprise for last though, with the long awaited mini fridge. Overall, Xbox and Bethesda had a very solid conference. I cared more about a majority of these titles than I did in the previous presentations. It's deserving of at least a B plus. Square Enix, the company most known for RPG titles such as Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Nier, Kingdom Hearts, spent the first 20 minutes of their 45 minute presentation talking about Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Admittedly, the game didn't look that bad, but after a few minutes of the trailer, I got the gist of that quirky Marvel type game and it seemed like it was over. Until they started and completed an entire gameplay section all during the presentation, not before showing the logo like eight times until it actually ended. I get you want to sell this game, but my lord, this was so boring to watch. Next, they announced they were remastering tons of Final Fantasy games with the Pixel Remaster Collection, and then they didn't show any footage of what that is. Okay, great. The new Legend of Mana looks cool, and after two minutes of RPG games, I'm sure you're bored, so not to fear, we brought more Marvel. After that, we drunkenly stumbled into the mobile section of the conference, meaning I got to see all these properties and titles I care about put on a platform I don't use. Okay, great. Babylon's Fall doesn't look amazing, but it at least looks pretty good. And at the very, very least, they ended with a new Final Fantasy game, Stranger of Paradise. But even the Final Fantasy wackiness of a dude in a t-shirt fighting to take down the God of Chaos couldn't save this presentation for me. F. <laughs> Capcom began their presentation by saying, Hey everyone, we're only going to show you Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, and Ace Attorney, so please stay tuned. And then when that was all they showed, everybody was still waiting for a surprise. Even if Capcom didn't show much or anything that you or I especially cared about, at least they told us explicitly, Hey guys, this is literally it. But I think E3 has everyone in that mood where they're expecting to be wowed and caught off guard by a brand new surprise reveal. So at the end, no matter what, it kind of feels like you've been lied to. Capcom Capcom gets an H for honesty. Finally, 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 it's time for Big Daddy Nintendo, my most anticipated conference this year, and I've been eagerly waiting to see just what they're going to show. Oh, please not again. Starting off, we got a new Smash character, Kazuya, from Tekken. I can't say I'm blown away by this, but ultimately it's very cool to see all these different fighting game characters come together. I don't really have anyone besides maybe Master Chief I'm particularly hoping makes it in, so I really can't be disappointed by this. Though the tossing of these characters into a big lava pit felt a bit too specific. F-Zero, Kid Icarus, and ARMS, all relatively dead franchises. If they had thrown in Ness or Lucas as well, that would have been game. Anyway, Anyways, next up is Worms, and I'm as big a fan of Worms as the next guy, but is this supposed to run like that? Moving on to something bigger than real life, Monkey Ball. I am so happy to see new Monkey Ball remasters coming our way. Nothing captures the same sort of fun, couch party feeling that Monkey Ball gives you, and with a few of the last entries not being received all that well, I'm excited to see them going back to their roots a bit. Next is Mario Party Superstars. It's basically the 3DS's Mario Party Top 100, but now on the Switch with online play, which is honestly something I've wanted for a very long time. Time. It might not be a brand new Mario Party 12, but honestly, maybe that's for the best. And then, suddenly, 
Metroid 5 was announced, otherwise known as Metroid Dread, a sequel to Fusion that's been in the works for at least 15 long years. Metroid Samus Returns was a really awesome game with a lot of stupid mistakes and flaws to go alongside it. Metroid Dread looks like it's adopting that style and I'm very excited to see them hopefully remedy a lot of those issues and expand on a lot of the good. And that title is so cool. The feel and showcase of the game so far is exactly how I'd want the aesthetic of a brand new 2D Metroid to be. Next, I was once again reminded of my own humanity. Saw Cruise and Blast, a chaotic racing game. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is coming to Switch, and it doesn't look to be too downgraded, which is impressive. More Mario Golf Super Rush footage, aka my game of the year. A brand new WarioWare, which I was quite frankly very surprised but delighted to see, and the same can be said for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Advance Wars got a reboot, and even though I know nothing personally about the game, I know a bunch of of people love the hell out of this series, so it's very refreshing to see Nintendo cater to that kind of audience. Everybody cut the bullshit they're announcing a Zelda Game & Watch. To end off the Nintendo presentation, we finally saw footage for the newest entry into the Zelda series, Breath of the Wild 2. It looks magical. Unfortunately, we only got to see a minute or so of gameplay, and from what they showed us, I really hope it doesn't just end up being practically the same as the first game, with the landscape looking very similar to the original, only now with the gorgeous addition of these Sky Islands. As well as some new touches so far, like Link's runic arm, and a few new abilities that got shown off. I'm still ever confident that Breath of the Wild 2 will take all the problems we had with the first and shape up to be something very, very special, for the Zelda series. And that was the Nintendo presentation. On a regular E3 year, this presentation, along with a lot of the others we saw today, could be seen as pretty lackluster and maybe even disappointing. But you've also got to understand that there's been a lot going on over the last year and we can't expect E3 to be booming and bustling quite just yet. Still, I overall very much enjoyed this presentation and the E3 season as a whole. Letting my Nintendo bias show just a bit, I'm giving the presentation an A-, making it my E3 winner. Or at least it would be if I wasn't including the Connor Eats Pants Direct, which earns a glorious A++.